Welcome to this short walkthrough of the code I used to create a phishing detection neural network. We begin by downloading the data set from the repository and importing the corresponding Python modules. Next up, we set some high-level parameters and uh, actually load the CSV file into a pandas data frame. We can see that the data frame contains the, a lot of URLs with the corresponding fish tank IDs um, and some other information that we don't really care about for this purpose because we're trying to make an AI that only works on the domain name. So to do that, we iterate over all of the URLs and we determine the domain name for each URL. And then we add that back as a new column into our original data frame. So now all the domain names in this data frame will be considered phishing domains. Now, how do we get not phishing domains? For that, we'll be using the whitelist by Umbrella. Cisco Umbrella is similar to the Alexa ranking, a list of the 1 million most frequently visited domains. We want to make sure that we are very certain about if a certain domain name is a phishing or not phishing. To ensure that there's no overlap, we have to check if there's any intersection between the phishing domain names and the whitelist domain names, which is what we check in, in this line. And then afterwards, we add a new tag to each domain in the phishing data set, which is also in the whitelist. Next up, we will have a quick, quick look at how our data set looks like at the moment. So we have the URL in here, we have the domain name in here, and we have another column that tells us whether or not this domain name is also in the whitelist. Moving on, we have a quick look at the whitelist. And in the top 20 of the whitelist, we can see again, the domain names are just labeled here. So now the domain names here and the domain names in our phishing data set are more or less the same type of information, except one of them is phishing and one of them is not phishing. Let's have a look at quickly how many domain names are in both data sets. And we find that out of the 23,000 data points in our phishing data, there's 1,400 uh, and a couple more that are also in the whitelist. We want only the elements of the whitelist or the elements of the phishing data set, which are not in both. Next up, we want to actually select our training data. The phishing domains is pretty straightforward. This is simply the domain name column from our phishing data set without the intersections. Um, but from our whitelist, as we have the 1 million most visited domains, we don't want 1 million data points. So what we do instead is we take the same length as our phishing domains, which in our case is now something like 22,000, and we sample as many from our whitelist. Um, by randomly sampling, we should be able to reduce it to a subset, and we can decide to oversample the, the whitelist by this factor oversampling rate. To have a quick look at what we have selected here, we'll print some basic examples. Here we see we have 22,000 uh, fishing examples and 22,000 non-fishing examples. Now, how do we actually create the uh, data to train on? So we want to create an X and a Y. The X is all of the inputs, the Y is the label or the class that our neural network is trying to predict. We create the labels by saying one is phishing and zero means a non-phishing. So now if we create this, we now have created the X and Y arrays that we need. Now at the moment still, our domain names are in the shape of letters. So we're going to be using the encoding approach that was introduced by uh, a course called TensorFlow 2.0 in 7 hours by the um, freecodecamp.org YouTube channel. And we basically take the uh, approach used to convert characters to an index. We make use of the samples that we have here, uh, join them all into one giant string, and then we extract all of the unique characters out of there by using the set. This allows us to create a vocabulary that contains basically every letter in the alphabet or 
more precisely every letter or symbol that occurs in our domain names. One change I did was compared to what Free Code Camp was showing is, I insert a space as a symbol in position zero. This is going to be used later when we are padding our sequences because the space symbol does not occur in domain names usually. It allows us to use it as a placeholder for padding. In this case, I select 40 as the maximum length for our sequences. What we do next is we want to split our uh, sample array X and our label array Y into training and testing data. For this, I'll take 15% as testing data and we will be using the random seed that we defined at the beginning. So we always get the same split. Next up, we go through some of the examples that we have created here so far. So we can see that um, we have 37,800 samples, 66,000 uh, testing samples. For each one, we can find the, the domain name, whether or not it's phishing. So one would be phishing, zero here is not phishing, and the corresponding weight. At the moment, we're using the same amount of phishing and non-phishing samples, so the weight is one for all of them. In the next steps, we will then convert all of this into the numbers and we will pad our arrays with zeros until they are of the right length. Now that we have our training and testing data, I'll copy over some of the custom evaluation functions that will be used and we can begin making our actual model. In this case, I'll be using a sequential um, neural network, which is based on an LSTM. Then we'll be compiling the model and we see that we currently have 120,000 parameters to train. One of the things we'll be doing is, again, specify a class weight, which is defined as such based on the oversampling rate that we're using above again. And additionally, we'll be using a callback called early stopping. And finally, we can actually begin training our neural network. So what we can do to speed this whole process up is up here in runtime, change the runtime to GPU accelerated. And once it's initialized again, we can run all of the code up to this moment. And once it arrives back down here, we should be seeing a much higher speed at training. Now that training has concluded, we can begin to evaluate what the neural network's performance are. First of all, let's see how it did on our testing data. So we're getting an accuracy of 86% on the testing data. To help us understand a little bit about what these outputs look like, let's put in some handcrafted examples to get a better understanding of what the neural network does. Anything larger than a 0.5 is considered a one, so in our case, phishing. Anything smaller than 0.5 is considered not phishing, so a zero then the accuracy is determined by the percentage of true negatives and plus true positives that it obtained in our uh, input data. To get a best, better understanding of this, we'll make use of our custom evaluation functions. So what we see here in the top plot is the distribution of accuracy compared to the decision threshold. So as I said earlier, by default, the evaluation is at 0.5 threshold but as we can see the highest accuracy is slightly a bit to the right of this so it's making use of a threshold that is slightly at a different value if you have a look at the distribution of predictions it has made we can see that the in the true negative area so where the neural network has predicted not phishing and it was actually a not phishing domain name that most of them it is very sure about However, we see a long tail forming all the way to the right, which is the false positive area, where the neural network has predicted a domain name to be phishing, even though it actually wasn't phishing. Similarly, we can see down here below, so these are all the values, all the examples which were actually phishing, and the true positives, most of them, it is very sure about that they are phishing, but there's also a large number here so why is this? Um, let's have a look at the different 
at samples from the different uh, areas of these plots. For this we can scroll slightly up again and we first of all see that the, the best decision threshold was at 0 0.42. So this means that we'll consider anything below 0 0.42 to be not fishing, anything which is predicted uh, an output, which has a predicted output higher than 0 0.42 will be considered fishing. With this approach, we get an accuracy of 86% with a true positive rate of 89%, which means 89% of, um, of the phishing domain names were actually correctly predicted to be phishing. Uh, inversely, the true negative rate is at 82%, which means that 82% of the not phishing domain names were actually predicted to be safe. There is a false positive rate, which means 17% of the domains that were considered not phishing were incorrectly classified as phishing. If we look at some of the samples from the various bins, we see that a true negatives, so these are examples where the neural network is very sure about, look like this. And as we go towards the right in our plot, so into the false positive range, we see the length of the URLs increasing. We see the number of dots increasing, number of dashes, and generally this is a pretty good indication of what it thinks is phishing. Similarly, if we look at the false negatives here, um, even though these are phishing URLs, the AI classified them as not such. Some of these actually appear to be legitimate domain names, which might correspond to servers that were hacked and are now used for phishing. Similarly, if we scroll further down, the further we go, we get to the true positive range. And here we have a bunch of very highly classified uh, phishing domain names. These have, again, a lot of dashes, quite a high length, a lot of dots in their domain names. How can we improve the performance of this neural network? So let's go back up here to where we created our input data and we can increase the oversampling rate. So by setting this to, for example, 1.5 and running all of the code again, we essentially now use 50% additional samples for not fishing. And this will result in the weights of not fishing to be modified as well which helps the neural network get more samples of what not to do. Okay, the neural network is done training again. So let's have a look at uh, how our outputs have changed. First of all, we notice that the accuracy curve, the blue line here, has shifted quite a bit to the right. And we see a higher degree of certainty with a larger percentage at the uh, true negative side, but a lower percentage at the true positive side now. If we scroll back up to the top of the output here, um, we can see that our accuracy has actually improved to 87% overall. And now our false positive rate has reduced. Our false negative rate, however, has increased um, in exchange. Well, more or less. Um, well, this video was meant to give an overview of what has been done to train this neural network. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below uh, or post an issue on the GitHub repository. Thank you for watching.